Come on down here. Hi, I'm here with uh, Lorraine Warren, and we have a few minutes just to mm -hmm. talk about, um, just to kind of talk about the truth behind what really happened in the Southington um, haunting on Meriden Road. Um, Meriden Avenue. Or Meriden Avenue. <laughs> um, now, what, on your perspective, I know the, the movie was loosely based on it. Very. Um, what happened inside of that house um, that you can recall? Okay. Um, let me say this. We, we, um, we entered the home the morning after we were contacted by Carmen Snedeker mm -hmm. and her niece who was living with the family at that time. And um, we didn't know too much about it other than the fact that, you know, when she called she was hysterical on the telephone. When we got there, it went right downstairs mm -hmm. into the basement area. And I talked to her and her niece for a while. I don't think the husband had moved from New York State to Connecticut at that time. Mm -hmm. He had a transfer with his job. You see, um, the son was getting chemo at Yukon Medical, and they were actually going back and forth, I think, more than once a week for that for him and that was taking its toll. So that's how they happened to come about renting this home that they rented. Mm -hmm. um, when Ed and I got into the house itself, we separated and Ed went downstairs. After a little while, I went downstairs and as soon as I walked into the first room, um, it was just an overwhelming bad feeling. I, I, I had a feeling of fear and like that, mm -hmm. that I probably was picking up from the boy who had experienced what he had in that room, which was his bedroom. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that that room was a coffin room, where the coffins were kept, where they would pick out the, for the... Um, the, the families would pick out the coffin. Mm -hmm. And um, then I started to walk down the hallway. I'm not seeing Ed, mm -hmm. and I knew he hadn't passed me, so I couldn't quite understand where he went. Now, as I walked down the hall, there was little anti-rooms, kind of, that went off where there were things, different things stored. I got down to the end of the hallway and I looked to my left, and I could see the area where they brought the, the bodies in. Mm -hmm. And it was the double doors on that side of the driveway. Then there was two prep rooms, and one of them was a bloodletting area, and the other was where they would bring the bodies up for viewing. And I thought, oh my God. Why would these trappings still be here for a family coming here with a young family? And it was kind of uncomfortable, but I thought, well, they're not buying the house. You know, they're just really renting here. And so I didn't say anything about that. I didn't address that part of the issue. Mm -hmm. But while I was in this area, where they prepped the bodies. I had horrible bad feelings. And why should I have such horrible bad feelings when it's, it was people who had passed and it was people who were being prepared for burial. And, but a far, a far more had exactly, I believe, had gone on in that area that the family was not aware of. For one thing, Carmen was not aware that she actually rented a funeral home. She was not aware of that when she did that. So then we went upstairs and she began talking, and the niece began talking about the frightening things that were happening in the home. The one frightening thing that was happening in the home is that where the niece slept, Mm -hmm. which was on that 
the main floor of the yeah. house in a small bedroom. The covers on her bed would levitate off her. They would levitate right off her. And then you would see something under the covers besides her. And that's really, you know, that would terrify this niece that was sleeping, that was living there with them. So this went on for a period of time. We asked the Catholic priest if he was the parish priest, if he would come and bless the house. And he did. He did come to bless the house, but it needed far more than a blessing of the house mm -hmm. because it just seemed to antagonize what was there. You could stay like the whole night as we would do in the home itself. When we were there, we would stay in the master bedroom. <coughs> Not that we were sleeping, mm -hmm. but we were there. And you would hear that chain hoist coming up mm -hmm. by itself. So Ed went down there to see if there was anybody doing that. <coughs> Excuse me, moving that chain, chain hoist like that. Mm -hmm. There was no one. There was no one down there at all. He could actually see that actually happening at that time. Then there was these two people of science and they asked Ed if it would be possible for them to go into the house mm -hmm. and spend the night with us there in the home and see exactly what they, as people of science, would be able to pick up. They fled in the middle of the night. Mm. Did they say, ever say what they seen? Or? They, never, they never ever contacted us again. They left in the middle oh. of the night. They actually moved from the school that they were teaching in, in Connecticut. They moved to some place, we were told, in New York State oh, wow. to teach. So they were frightened. They were intimidated by what you know, was there. Sure. Then we decided it would be best um, to talk to the bishop to find out what we could do. The bishop assigned two uh -huh. priests to come. One of the priests was an exorcist. Mm -hmm. The other was a very high-ranking clergyman, Catholic priest. And they both came there and said masses. They both wrote letters to the bishop mm -hmm. that the house required an exorcism, but they didn't want to be the priest to be picked to be the exorcist. Oh. And so the bishop assigned another priest mm -hmm. as an exorcist, and the house was successfully exorcised. And I want the people who own that home today, which I told them that it was successfully exercised, I mm -hmm. want them to really, truly know that because they shouldn't be experiencing anything in that house except the intrusion of the oh, public, which I better. feel very, very bad for them yeah. regarding that. I feel horrible for that family. And... Um, so it was successfully exercised. After it was successfully exercised, mm -hmm. there was a big tree out in front of the house. And it was strange. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a stormy night. It wasn't a rainy night. It wasn't a windy night. And what happened was that a large branch fell from a big tree. There is no big tree there now. I see they have two young trees in front of the house. Mm -hmm. And it was this one big tree that fell and it um, knocked out electricity in a large area of Southington. And that was right after the exercise, like after yes, they exercised the house? And there was a town meeting that night mm -hmm. and they weren't able to do anything because of it. They were attacked. They, they, they weren't able. They weren't able to do anything at all because of that. They weren't able to hold a meeting. Mm -hmm. 
So, so. Oh, that's yeah, like really. So that basically is kind of, you know, to give you an overview. You know, otherwise I could be here for two hours, telling you everything that 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 actually happened and took place in the house. But that's basically what happened. There were masses said, and there was an exorcism said. There was there was a blessing. Then there was, there was everything done in stages where the Catholic Church was concerned for their welfare. So thank you very much. What do you think of the new movie that's out? That's supposedly based on like. I what think are your it's. I didn't see the movie, dear, and um, I feel it's very loosely based on the real truth of what happened there okay. because of the fact that, um, you know, there was, I, I had no nothing to do with that at all. Okay. And then how about that show, A Haunting? Did you ever see that one, the version of The Haunting in Connecticut? They showed it on, like, the Discovery Channel. Yes. Can, how, well, how, how did they depict that, it? That wasn't as bad. Okay. I understand. I, I I think it dealt with a lot more fact than this. Okay. You know, but you know, unless unless you're really dealing with the people who spent the time to research, okay. and all the weeks that you spent there, it's it's hard to feel that there was anything really truthfully factual about everything that took place there. Okay. And what would be your recommendation for if, if there's anyone that's experiencing any kind of hauntings going on in their house or are very uncomfortable in their house? Um, would you have, like, do you have any advice to give these people? What well, I think the best thing to do is usually, if they're people of faith, mm -hmm. is to have the church come in and wh whatever their belief, whatever their belief system is, is to have the home blessed or exercised whatever is needed. But don't let things like that just go. Okay. Lorraine, thank you very much. I have one question for you. Okay. Could you explain why the church would not admit that uh, an exorcism was done at that house? I didn't know until Channel 30 told me. I didn't know that. Um, that's commonplace, you know, where, where the Catholic Church is concerned. I can understand why. It would happen. They don't want everybody to has a haunting in their house to, um, you know, to think that they're going to okay an exorcism of the home. They're not going to do that. But it was successfully exercised, and I do know the priest the exercised, and I do know the other three priests who went into the house. Thank you very much. So there were four. There were four Catholic priests mm -hmm. and in, involved in, in the case. Oh, so good. and I I know I know all of them and so it's you know, in fact one of them who was the exorcist had contacted me and um, wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. You know, regarding this movie and I said, Nothing I have anything to do with. Yeah. You know. So you know. Well, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. So.